Hey, welcome to the Rock Your Talk expert interview series. I've got Sandra Botts with me. She is a career specialist helping executives. And I'm Lisa Reed. I'm with Get Speaking Gigs Now and Productive Learning. I'm a trainer for productive learning. And today we're talking about how business and EQ meets meets up with each other. And I specifically wanted to bring Sandra on today because as experts are dealing with um, coronavirus and all the things that we're, we're managing, I know that there's also people in the world who are looking for a career right now, like minus the coronavirus, they were already looking for something. And I thought, wow, I don't know what I would do in that situation. I don't know how I would manage that, handle that. Um, it's, it's a pretty, I would think it'd be a really big obstacle. And so I wanted to bring Sandra on because those are the people that she's helping and she has a lot to offer. So um, I asked if she would mind coming and sharing some of her expertise. So uh, Sandra, you wanna just, before we get into your, your tips, I know you've got some expert tips. Do you mind sharing a little bit about, you know, who you help and what you do on a regular basis? Yes, sure. Thanks, Lisa, for having me. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm a career strategist with ExecuNet. So I help executives navigate what is most likely the most um, difficult transition of their career. You know, you think that the more experience that you get, the higher you go, the easier it is. But in reality, there's a bell curve to that because you get to the sea level and all of a sudden the supply and demand is not in your favor. Yeah. And you're, there's less jobs. There's one CEO per company. There's one CFO per company. And so the demand is lower. And then on the supply side, the, you're not competing against the unemployed people anymore because since the jobs are so few and far between, everybody's always looking. And the average right. executive role is only 18 months anyway. So all of a sudden the supply and demand is not in your favor and people are like, how come I've never not gotten a job that I've interviewed before and now I'm not being successful? Is something wrong with me? What's happening? What's happening to the world? And then COVID-19 comes around and, and then the anxiety sets in. So there's definitely 97% of the job search advice out there is for 97% of the population. Wow. And when you're at the executive level, you do things, you get a job a completely different way. So I help executives on that, that 3% of how, how to transition their next job. That's awesome that you're able to uh, really look at it in that way and, and see that there is this, just this like fine little margin of people who really need this support. What, what are some tips, maybe three tips that you have that you would say, okay, here's what you need to keep in mind. If you're in that 3%, what would you, what would you advise people to do right now? Um, I think that the best things to understand are how it's different in the 3%. And um, I think the, the, besides the supply and demand, I think it's important to understand that once you sort of cross that bridge of being, you know, your compensation is over 200K a year, you're, you're not talent anymore. You want to stop thinking of yourself as talent and you want to start thinking of yourself as a product. Oh, okay. So that's, like um, a, that's an important distinction, right? So that tip number one is like not thinking of yourself as talent, but thinking of yourself as a product. As a product, mm -hmm. okay. yes. And so the next step would be to say, okay, well, if I'm a product, how would I be marketing myself? And so if you're a spend to a company and they're going to spend a certain amount of money, what's the ROI that they expect? So that's where we move into discovering what your unique value proposition is. Okay. So it's almost like, it's like almost like having, ha having you is almost like having a marketing person for you as a product. And I, I think when people have been in job searches before, they're not necessarily thinking of themselves as a product, right? It's like, you're thinking of yourself as like, oh, I'm this person who's a great. I've got this potential, <laughs> yeah. I've got motivation. And, and those are great features and assets. But when you're a product, you have to market yourself on your benefit. Got it. And that's what a value proposition is. You're not talking about your go-getterness or your years of experience or everything that you've done. You're talking about how the stuff you've done benefits them, which yeah. is really psychologically difficult for people to detach from because they've been through 20, 30 years of experience and experienced some, some 
great accomplishments that they have some real psychological attachments to, but that may not be the ROI for your new stakeholder that's going yeah. to you. And that's interesting of like looking at it from that other perspective. So, okay, cool. That like, what can you bring? What's your ROI to the company, to the organization? And then how do you uh, really market yourself as that product? To mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, that's, oh, I never thought about it that way. Very yeah. helpful. The next, yeah, once you know what that value proposition is, the next step is really communicating it. And there's several channels and that's really where I come in at, at ExecuNet is really to say, with your particular value proposition and what you do, here's what would be the channels in your particular scenario. Okay. And we could go through those different channels to communicate it. So which, which sounds one, like sounds yeah. like there's like um which this is where it comes into play. I know for for me, I'm, I, I can read an article about something, but then you, you have that question of like, well, but how does that pertain to me? What does that mean about me? How would I, how would my skills fit into that? And if you saw a whole list of all these channels of how you're supposed to market yourself, I would imagine it'd be really overwhelming. And then it's easier to have someone just say, listen, I've looked at your thing. I've gotten to know you. I, here's what you've got. This is the best, you know, two, three strategies we're going to put you in this direction and then it just like kind of oh, okay right. <laughs> putting your putting your faith in someone who's done this lots of times right there's something that executives come to realize the higher they go and that is that they are their own blind spot yeah and yes that is something and that's why executive coaching is a thing and and that's you know part of what we learn at Executive. Like wow, we can be an expert at something, but that doesn't mean we can we can be an expert marketer. I mean, I deal with CMOS from major major companies sure. taking major brands to market, but to market themselves, they are their own blind spot, and we are all our own blind spot. Right. I know I have mine, and I know we were talking earlier about well, we were talking earlier about. Um, how you know eq and business come together and of course productive learning you know we that's our specialty you know eq mindset how do you navigate all this we actually before we even had the coronavirus like we have a workshop called navigating change and holy smokes are we navigating some change or what right now we are yeah. navigating some major change so how have you been using what you're learning in that capacity to you know for yourself for your clients, like what, what comes to mind for you? Um, well, I think it's really, I guess, what would be the third tip. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, Yay, there we go. The third, third tip. tip is focus on what you can control. Yes. And the more that we cannot control. So, so, so part, part of what I've really gotten out of productive learning is to really focus on what we can control and not what we can't, how to determine what those things are. And, and the tools in our tool chest to be able to do that. And the more things, the more there is out there that we don't control, um, such as maybe a little background noise that I'm having right now. <laughs> so the more we can't control, the more we need to hunker down and leverage the things that we can control. And how, do you, how does that translate for you? Like when you notice, something and it could have been the last couple of weeks where it's like oh this just was not in my hands like i cannot do anything about this thing that's out of my control how do you you know work yourself through that piece what, what's your go-to well i think the biggest thing that i've actually learned it from productive learning is to give myself the permission to step back and ask myself some questions that's good. And it's, it's, um, it's not our go-to methodology in life. We don't go through life talking to ourselves or asking <laughs> ourselves questions. We are usually in survivor mode, which is go, go, go. What's the next thing I need to do? What's what forward? Mm -hmm. And to give yourself the permission to step back and ask the question, and this is the question I ask myself, is this something that is in my control or is it not? Mm -hmm. And it is really easy to spin ourselves into a cyclone of what if, what if, 
things we can't control. Yeah. I have had a big tendency to do that in my lifetime. So I ask myself, is it something I can control? If it's not my, my tool in my tool chest that I have actually learned from productive learning is to take that energy mm -hmm. and focus in on something that I can control. And the, I have found that not only, the, the more that I do that, the more success I have because I'm really leveraging. And if you think about what the word leverage is, it's to take you know, a small amount of power and leverage something big. And the more I do that, the more success I have. And I start to see the opportunities that are right there in front of us. And wow. So it's like, it's like it opens your creativity all of a sudden, it, it, instead it, of that forcing, it's like, a, oh, hold on, I'm going to pause for a second. And then, and then other things are free to come in is, is how it sounds like when you're explaining. Yeah. It. And, and you start seeing the things that are right there in front of you that you didn't see before in a different light. I mean, that's how, that's how it works for me. And I've used that with some of the executives that we work with to help them refocus in on the things that they do have control over. And once you're focusing on what you do have control over, you feel powerful. Mm -hmm. I know I do. I feel mm -hmm. powerful. I feel powerful when I'm making some sort of progress on something, whatever mm -hmm. that is. It may not be the relevant issue for the time. It may not be, you know, being able to get more face masks to our first responders. Um, but, but a perfect example of that is, is the other day I actually, I made a list, uh, put things in list of things that I can control and things that I can't control. And when I put down on the list as the first thing, getting face masks to first responders, I put it in the list of things I can't control. And I was about to move over when all of a sudden it came to my mind, somebody at my church that is a seamstress and she sews. And I thought, wait, I got to get a hold of her. And she says, Sandra, I'm in the process of getting some materials together right now. Can you help me? All of a sudden, I felt powerful. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's almost like a, a, a letting go, metaphorically letting go so that you can move forward, which is our opposite. Crazy. Like we, we want to grab it, but it, like just that release for a second then opens up. Yeah, when we're in our fight or flight mentality, focusing on what we can't control, we don't, our minds aren't open in, in a learning way to be able to see the things we want to see, which is something, as you know, we learn about in EQ. Yes. Um, you don't, you don't learn, you don't move forward until you're in, you don't create when you're in a negative emotional, rea emotional reactor, but when you're in the positive emotional reactor, you do. Mm -hmm. So just simply redirecting your activities to the things that you do have control over. And, and I've had a couple of those calls yesterday with my executives. We were in the process. Her resume is being developed. We developed this amazing value proposition for her. It's still being written. She says, I need to do something today. And I said, that's great. Let me show you some things you can do on LinkedIn. And she got all excited. And the next thing you know, her mood had shifted be from anxiety yep. to empowerment. Wow. Yeah, that's great. That's so beautiful. Congratulations. High five, virtual high five. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so glad that you were able to jump on today. We were able to share some tips and this is really helpful information, especially if you're an executive out there who's in that 3%, who's, who's like going, okay, wait a second. I just am navigating some major change and trying to find a career um, position right now. Uh, you just got some really great tips from Sandra and um, I'll post her information on the thing, uh, on the thing, on, on LinkedIn as well. But is there any way that you want people to reach you, Sandra? Is there a preferred method of uh, Yeah, reaching? connect with me, connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you have my LinkedIn and, and I, LinkedIn is a great place to connect because it'll also allow me to connect you with other people. Oh, okay. Good. And even though we're social, even though we're physical distancing, we can still be connected to each other and um, LinkedIn is a great platform to do that. And it let's just, just to clarify it, Sandra, S-A-U-N-D-R-A -A, yeah. and then bots B with a B as in boy, B-O-T-T-S. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With exactly. 
I'll put it on there, but just in okay. case, I know from one, from one person who has a weird spelling name, <laughs> to a, yours isn't so exactly. weird. Yours is actually a normal one, but there's still a little couple ways to spell. No, that. we're, we're in the, we're in the same boat. We're in the same boat. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and end our segment here, but uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. We really appreciate it. And everybody, we will be, I'll be back with some more tips for you on other topics. We'll see you soon on Rock Your Talk.